A sub S plus this, the definite integral evaluated at negative t to t, psi plus d over dx of psi dx equals psi over 2 sine of 2 pi x over lambda times pi y psi f psi plus d over dx of lambda over 4 cosine of 2 pi x over lambda y psi f psi lambda plus a s minus 4 pi r squared pho the pho q or charge density over epsilon naught, which is a permittivity of free space. Um, you probably didn't understand all of that. So just to clear it up, let me draw a Gaussian sphere at quantum level. It's supposed to be at quantum level. And sphere, of course. It has a radius of all, and since it's a, and of course it's a Gaussian sphere, and it has a wave called psi interfering with its surface, hitting the center, interfering with the center, blah, blah, blah. and it's a wave called d over dx of psi, interfering with the surface. Now, d over dx of psi and psi are different waves. So psi and d over dx of psi. But they're similar because d over dx of psi is the derivative of psi itself. So that means if psi equals the amplitude times sine of 2 pi x over the wavelength, that means d over dx of psi is equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi x over lambda times 2 pi over lambda. So that means that the, the surface right here is the, is the length between this part and this part. Um, and the, surface, the area of the sphere below that part is what this explains. So AS would be, so there's two points, negative T, I mean, sorry, T, negative T. The, the negative T is, the, T is the highest point, and negative T is the lowest point. Um, now, so, and AF, A sub S is the, is, is you connect T to the other T and then to the center, and then T to the other T, the other T to the other T. The area of this would be this. This isn't, this isn't the whole area of the sphere right here, because just connecting T to the other T, you're, le you're leaving the negative T out. So I need to add the, the definite integral uh, evaluated at negative T, T of psi plus D over DX of psi DX of psi equals the psi over 2 sine, yeah. Uh, quiet! And, um, and to find this, this doesn't tell me all, I mean, I can't just, if I don't know T and negative T, I can't just go on and plug these points in. So without knowing t and negative t, you can figure this equation out with, and all you need is the the wavelength, the pole. Oh, wait, is it? Is it? Pole, wait, here I don't think they have a name for that yet, which is called y. That's y, by the way, and also. You also need the equations of the wave and the radius of the sphere and the area of the circle. So if you do have that, so let's say psi was psi equals sine of x and d over dx of psi 
equals cosine of x. See, sine of x is the integral of cosine of x, and cosine of x is the derivative of the sine of x, so all both sides. So, so if they were both in a sphere, like a Gaussian sphere, like these two waves were, then if I plug this in, I know as plus negative t to t psi plus d o dx psi dx equals. So let's make up a few things here. Well, the, first we need this part, like here, and we also need to make up the charge density, and we also need to make up the, um, where is, okay, we don't need to make up anything else. So we so let's make the charge density oh and the radius sorry so let's make the radius one the radius is one that means r squared equals one we have the charge density equals three that means yeah and we also have the we also have y psi is equal to 2, and we have y to d over dx of psi is equal to 3. And um, so this isn't going to be accurate because I just made it up the y's, but even though they have a, a sine of x and cosine of x has it have a sophisticated specific y, but, um, you know, nobody searches that up anymore, so, and so this is going to be, if I plug it all in, this is going to be psi is sine of x over 2 times the sine of, the lambda is 2 pi, like we already know, and over x. So this is good. This is gonna cross out to be one half. So one half of pi times y with respect to psi, the frequency with respect to psi. If I didn't tell you that, and the this goes to two, and this goes to one over two pi. Yeah, that goes to one over two pi. So actually these cross out, and that leaves us with one fourth times one half, which is one eighth. So one eighth plus, and then there's gonna be, this is gonna be d over dx of psi over four cosine of two pi x over lambda. So cosine of two pi, cosine of x, over 4 times the cosine, lambda is 2 pi, that's, that's going to be 1 fourth. 1 fourth times 3 is going to be 1 twelfth. 1 twelfth times... 1 twelfth times 2 pi, which is the wavelength, I mean, yeah, the wavelength. And then multiply that times 1 over 2 pi, which is going to be just... One, so this whole thing crosses out. So it's one twelve, one plus one eight plus one twelve, and then we have um, plus as the as we just gonna make up. It's gonna be what? Why are you just making up variables? Because I don't know the bit. Uh, because I don't. I can't. I, because I'm making up variables because I can't figure them out from just this information because that's all the information I was given. And So you're like making up a problem now? Yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, go on. And um, then that, so AS is equal to 4, so plus 4. Okay, so it's 112 plus... 4 minus, okay, this is the pretty much 
with something with epsilon naught in it. So 4 pi r squared would be r is 2. No, that's why, sorry. r is 1. So r crosses out and bug q is 3. So 12 pi over epsilon naught. And that is your answer. You could calculate that if you want, but it's better to just leave that as that. Or you could, yeah, I'm going to make that one. Like, so 12 over 96 plus. Okay, Louis, we're past 10 minutes. Can you tell us okay. what it means? What do you mean? <laughs>